Ad Astra Abiska. Welcome to Genshin Impact in D&D, Traveler. I'm Talon Striker, and I'm here to guide you on this commission. Today we'll be talking about the second son of the Feiyun Commerce Guild, Xing Shou. Why don't you introduce yourself? Xing Shou, at your service, my liege. I humbly trust that even one such as I, a mere bookworm, may yet prove to be of some utility under your wise leadership. Nice. I don't often get a chance to speak with such formality. It felt pretty good. Well, without further ado, I bring you all Xingxiao in D&D. The goals for this build are as follows. Xingxiao needs to be able to make a rain of sorts to strike his enemies and protect his allies. He also needs a tsunami at his command to move and misdirect his foes. And last but not least, he needs his Guha style to uh, show all what he's capable of. It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. Starting out, Xingxiao's race will be a human variant. Here he gets a plus one to both charisma and strength. Xingxiao gets the language primordial and gets the proficiency in deception, being that he's a master prankster and all. Then Xingxiao gets the feat slasher. This gives him a plus one in strength, the ability to reduce his opponent's movement when he hits them, and impair their attacks if he crit them. I would say we are book buddies. Huh? Combat? Guhua clan? Comrades in arms? What on earth are you talking about? I told you that's our little secret. For stats, Xingxiao will go standard array. Strength will be a 14 since he single-handedly revived an almost dead clan. Dexterity is a 13 seeing as how he must flow like water to achieve some of these techniques. Constitution is a 12, not the best, but not the worst. Intelligence is a 10, he's pretty well read despite how much he slacks off. Wisdom is an 8 since he tends to play pranks on those he shouldn't. And his charisma is a 15 due to the fact that he commands respect while also having a playful side. Evidently, my hobby is reading. I'll read anything and everything. What's that mischievous grin for? Oh, that's between the two of us, okay? It's not appropriate to discuss it out loud. There's no point in bringing it up anyway. Xingxiao's background is a guild merchant seeing as how he hails from a family of merchants. He gets the acrobatics and history skills while picking up the calligraphy supplies since he likes to write stories. He also learns Sylvan as Liyue has a death guy. Must see places in Liyue? That's a tough question. Hmm... The place I would miss the most if it disappeared would be the Wanwen Bookhouse, first and foremost. The Guhua sect would be in the top 10, too. Xingxiao's personal characteristics are as follows. Personality traits are, I always want to know how things work and what makes people tick. I like to talk at length about my books that I make. Ideals are, my talents were given to me so that I can use them to benefit the world. Bonds are, the workshop where I learned my trade is the most important place in the world to me. And flaws are, I like pranking either close friends or those I feel who deserve it, which can be hilarious or disastrous. Your schedule is free today? Wonderful. I am ready to leave whenever you are. My book? Oh, never mind that. I can always pick up where I left off when I get back. But those in distress who need our assistance cannot afford to wait. Starting out, Xingxiao will be a paladin. At level 1 paladin, Xingxiao gets the Persuasion and Insight skills. He also gets Divine Sense and Lay on Hands. Divine Sense lets him open his awareness to detect any supernatural thing within range, while Lay on Hands gives Xingxiao a pool of healing power that he can use to heal others, cure one disease, or neutralize one poison. At level 2 paladin, Xingxiao gets a fighting style being dueling, divine smite, and access to level 1 spells. Dueling lets Xingxiao deal more damage when he fights with a single weapon in his hand. Divine smite lets him empower radiant energy into a weapon when he strikes to deal extra damage. The spells he picks up are Bless, Heroism, Shield of Faith, and Thunder of Smite. Bless lets him make a water sword to help his allies strike enemies or protect them. Heroism lets Xingxiao imbue bravery into someone, making them harder to scare and giving them temporary HP each turn. And Shield of Faith has a hydro form around somebody to bolster their defense, while Thunder Smite infuses Xingxiao's next attack with a rush of hydro that lashes out to deal more damage and potentially push them back. At level 3 Paladin, Xingxiao gets his subclass being Oath of the Open Sea. At this level, he gets Channel Divinity, Divine Health, and Oath Spells. Channel Divinity lets him harness his beliefs into one of three effects. Marine Lair lets Xingxiao make a fog cloud around him to obscure the area. Fury of the Tides channels the powerful might of the waves to bolster his attack so when he hits, he can push enemies back. Harness Divine Power lets Xingxiao use Hydro around him to regain a spell slot. Divine Health makes it so that way Xingxiao is immune to any disease, while Oath Spells gives him some spells automatically for every few levels. Here he gets Create or Destroy Water and Expeditious Retreat. 
Create or destroy water as it sounds allows him to do just that with up to 10 gallons worth of water. An expeditious retreat lets Xing Shou dash as a bonus action for up to a minute. At level 4, Xing Shou switches over to Warlock. At level 1 Warlock, he gets a subclass being the Fathomless. This subclass gives him Tentacles of the Deep and Gift of the Sea. Tentacle of the Deeps lets Xing Shou create a 10 foot long sword made of water that he can command to attack something. Gift of the Sea also gives him a swim speed and the ability to breathe underwater. He also gets access to spells. Here he picks up two cantrips being Eldritch Blast and Sword Burst, and gets access to level 1 spells being Armor of Agathis and Comprehend Languages. Eldritch Blast lets Xing Shou make a sword of Hydro that launches itself at a target. The number of swords it created increases every few levels. Sword Burst makes a few swords of Hydro that spin around Xing Shou to try and harm enemies around him who get too close. Armor of Agathis forms Spectral Frost over Xing Shou that can take some damage for him and deal cold damage back. And as a fan of books, he gets Comprehend Languages which lets him understand any spoken language and read any text for up to an hour. At level 2 Warlock, Xing Shou gets Eldritch Invocations. Normally he gets 2, but one would be immediately replaced next level, so here he'll just pick up Eldritch Sight, which lets him see anything magical within a certain range. This is his elemental sight. Were it not for my capability, the cause that so inspires me would remain confined to the pages that extol its virtues. At level 3 Warlock, Xing Shou gets a Pack Boon, here being packed to the blade. This lets him make a weapon, like a sword, out of water that he can summon and use whenever. And with this, he picks up the improved Pack Weapon, Eldritch Invocation. This makes his packed weapon magical and makes it easier for him to hit things or deal more damage to. He also gets level 2 spells and picks up Mirror Image and Suggestion. Mirror Image uses Hydro to create three illusionary duplicates of himself that can potentially make enemies hit one of the illusions instead of him. Suggestion lets Xing Shou suggest a course of activity and magically influence a creature to play it out. At level 4 Warlock, Xing Shou gets an ability score increase being a plus 2 to charisma making it an 18. He also picks up the cantrip Friends which allows him to have an advantage on all charisma based checks towards a single creature. It's great for playing tricks on others but the downside is that the jig is up after the spell ends. At level 5 Warlock, Xing Shou gets another Eldritch Invocation and access to level 3 spells. The Eldritch Invocation he picks up is Eldritch Might, which lets him empower an attack that hits with a force of a tsunami to deal more damage. The spell he picks up are Counterspell and Spirit Shroud. Counterspell lets Xing Shou attempt to cancel out another spell by sending water swords to distract the caster. Spirit Shroud lets him manipulate the water around him to form swords to increase his damage and slow enemies that get too close. This is his Intimental Burst. With Warlock done, Xing Shou can go back to Paladin for the rest of the build. At level 4 Paladin, Xing Shou gets an ability score increase, being a plus 2 to Charisma, maxing it out at 20. He also picks up Cure Wounds, which lets him heal a creature for a decent amount. At level 5 Paladin, Xing Shou gets Extra Attack and access to level 2 spells. Extra Attack lets Xing Shou make 2 attacks a turn instead of 1. The spells he picks up are Aid, Lesser Restoration, and his Oath spells give him Augury and Misty Step. Aid lets Xing Shou hydrate 3 allies giving them a boost to permanent HP for a temporary time while Lesser Restoration has him using Hydro to remove a debuff that a creature might have. Augury lets Xing Shou perform a ritual to see how a course of events might play out in the next 30 minutes and Misty Set lets him teleport to a location up to 30 feet away. Had I no moral compass, my efforts would have been misguided. Doomed to grasp at shadows while missing the substance, I would have become a Philistine that seeks only violence. At level 6 Paladin, Xing Shou gets Aura Protection which lets him passively bolster his allies when they need to try and avoid danger as long as they're close to him. Keep your enemies close, but people you want to prank closer. At level 7 Paladin, Xing Shou gets Aura of Liberation. This fills nearby creatures with energy of movement so they can move faster and can't be restrained or grappled. At level 8 Paladin, Xing Shou gets an Ability Score Improvement being a plus 2 to Strength making it a 16. At level 9 Paladin, Xing Shou gets access to level 3 spells. Here he picks up R of Vitality and Crusader's Mantle, while his Oath spells give him Call Lightning and Freedom of the Waves. R of Vitality lets Xing Shou heal somebody as a bonus action for a duration. Crusader's Mantle lets Xing Shou summon Hydro Blades for his allies to help them deal more damage. Call Lightning has Xing Shou form a small storm cloud that can be repeatedly used to call lightning down to damage enemies in an area. And Freedom of the Waves lets him summon a tidal wave, a whirlpool, a water spout, or something similar in an area to attack enemies. If Xing Shou is in the water, he can teleport up to 120 feet away. Level 10 Paladin gives Xing Shou Aura of Courage, which makes it so him and his friends can't be frightened as long as they are close. There is a cause that I seek to champion, yet few in Liu share my aspiration. This I have known for a long time, for it is a path I have walked for many years. 
At level 11 Paladin, Shingshou gets improved Divine Smite. This lets him passively infuse his attacks with Hydro to deal radiant damage. At level 12 Paladin, Shingshou gets an ability score improvement, being a plus 2 to Khan, making it a 14. At level 13 Paladin, Shingshou gets access to level 4 spells. Here he picks up R of Life and Staggering Smite, while his Oath spells give him Control Water and Freedom of Movement. R of Life has Life Preserving Energy, Radiant from Shingshou, giving each non hostile creature in an area resistance to necrotic damage, their hit points max not being reduced, and getting 1 HP if they are at 0. Staggering Smite lets Shingshou infuse his next attack with the ability to pierce both mind and body, dealing damage to both, and leaving them mentally vulnerable for a brief moment. Control Water lets him control any freestanding water inside of a cube up to 100 feet. Shingshou can choose to make a flood, part water, redirect flow, or cause a whirlpool. Freedom of Movement lets him touch a creature and make it so that nothing can restrict its movement. At level 14 Paladin, Shingshou gets Cleansing Touch which lets him use Hydro to automatically end a spell that's affecting a creature. At level 15 Paladin, Shingshou's final level, he gets Stormy Waters. This lets him call on the force of crashing waters as a reaction whenever a creature moves in or out of his reach, making them have to try and dodge it or take damage. I am most grateful for your company on my journey. I am proud of my achievements, both in the martial arts and in championing the cause so dear to my heart. Uh, I guess there's no need to euphemize any longer. Chivalry. That is the cause that inspires me, and that I seek to champion. Why should I shy away from it? I am sure my father and brother are under no illusion as to what I stand for by now. But of course, I still need to be somewhat discreet in the way I go about my business. With this, the second son of the Feiyun Commerce Guild Ching Shou is done. He might seem two-faced at times, but deep down he cares about others and defeating evil. But now comes the pros and cons of the guild. The pros are that Xingqiu has a raincoat of sorts that he can use to buff himself both offensively and defensively. He has the ability to control the crashing waves which is great for obstructing his enemy's movements, and a big umbrella that he can use to protect himself or his allies. The cons are that Xingqiu has tunnel vision with how many of his spells have concentration, he kinda has to pick something and stick with it. He has a slow reaction in the form of his dexterity not being the best, and he has a tendency of missing context clues so don't expect him to be good at getting a cast. But as long as he keeps his pranks in moderation and continues to follow his chivalry code, he'll be fine. Thank you for completing today's commission, and I'll see you all next time when we talk about the incredible popular bartender of the Cat's Tail Tavern. Yo yo, it's your magician with a mission here, Talent Striker. And I just wanted to say thank you all for your support. I know I haven't exactly been active lately, but some things came up in the last few months that made it kind of difficult to make videos. But if you've been joining the content so far, then please check out my Patreon. Um, I just made it, and if you support me there, then you'll be helping me create more content like this as well as helping my dream come true. At the lowest tier, you'll be able to vote on the next character I make and get a shout out on the end credits of videos. But even if you don't, it still means a lot to me that you all watch the things I put out. I got some new things that I'm going to try soon, and I hope you all enjoy them. But I hope you all have a wonderful morning, evening, or afternoon, and I'll see you all later. Wahoo!